Now, another group that seems to be concerned at Mark Jennings, well, letting the veil slip or the mask slip and saying, yeah, we've all been talking quite a lot about just cancelling Winston Peters because we don't like what he's saying. Another group that is concerned about that is Jonathan Ayling, uh, well, the Free Speech Union. And he joins us now. Jonathan, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us once more. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Uh, very well. Look, the more I thought about what Mark Jennings said in a taxpayer-funded podcast on a government radio channel, which was produced by his company, which received more than $2 million in government funding, the more I thought about this, the more chilled I am by it. Are you? The the lack of any sense of self-reflection or self-awareness in, in that discussion, not just from Mark Jennings' contribution, but from the series of commentators that, that uh, discussed the issue, re really is the ultimate irony, I think. Uh, there, there, were, there were some remarkable comments there, and of course Mark Jennings' uh, comment about, you know, the discussions that he has around whether they should report on Winston Peters, oh, sorry, who, of oh, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, whether, whether that they should cover that is, is one thing. But, but uh, Professor uh, Peter Thompson's comments around uh, the fact that you know, no rational information can make uh, these the great unwashed budge from their position. And, 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 and why do we have distrust now? Well, it's because of disinformation that circulates on social media. It, 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 it is the most classist, elitist, condescending comments I, I, I think um, I've encountered here in New Zealand. And, and Sean, as you know, my parents are Kiwis. I was born in New Zealand, but I grew up overseas. And I always had this reflection on New Zealand of what an egalitarian society it was and, and, and the way it avoided uh, the, the class structures and the condescension that exists in so many other countries. And, and yet I, I think that must be changing here now because you listen to these comments and just the 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 disdainful view it has for the common man. Uh, really, if if this podcast is talking all about the woman, danger, all to, woman, to, Stan, all woman, Stan, humanity. Let's say that Kiwis. Uh, the the uh, the the way this views the average citizens. Uh, that is the real threat to democracy. I think. Yeah, look, and also, I, you know, I was reflecting on Newsroom's kind of attempted hit job on the platform yesterday. Amazed journalistically that they got a former staffer from the Labor leader's office to write it with very little journalistic experience. Um, and as the whole premise of his piece was, A, that you had to define media by being left-wing or right-wing, and B, that the problem with the platform, what was so problematic about the platform was we couldn't be cancelled which suggests these people have a philosophy that what you do with ideas you don't like, you cancel or you silence them. That's exactly right. And, and, it, and it plays into this highly moralising view of ideas that there are, there are good, righteous, virtuous ideas out there and there are bad, evil ideas out there. And, and what we need to do is be able to crush the, the wicked ideas that come out, not, not through dialogue, not through reason or relationship or debate, but through power, through force. Mm. And 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 it, it 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 it's quite a it, it's quite a uh, frightening way of viewing the world actually and 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 it, it, it maybe it shouldn't surprise us so much, Sean. I mean, in reality, this is the way societies have structured themselves for most of humanity. But but what uh, the West, what the Enlightenment, what values like free speech have done for us over the past. 500 years or so is led to the greatest period of human stability and prosperity and peace and so we've actually come to take a lot of uh, a lot of that for granted and and this needs to be a wake-up call now we either we either have a wake-up call now in terms of the discussions that we have and and reflection on the alternatives otherwise we'll have to experience but that. the mainstream but media are not covering the story jonathan no no and 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 that the the um the reality is, uh, the you know the commentators in this piece had had some points to make. They they they, they weren't just mm. completely off the deep end, but the the absence of 
any sort of reflection on on a, a, a portion of the role that they might have to play in it is what will actually compound this issue more and more. And, uh, and when you have the likes of the Deputy Prime Minister, the second most senior politician in the country, who by virtue of democracy and the people's voice has acquired that position again. Uh, I, I don't think the media are going to win this one, actually, Sean. I, I, I realise that they have quite a lot of power in their hands and they're, they're not pushing in the direction of letting all Kiwis have a voice and letting Kiwis make up their mo- own minds. But I actually believe in... Uh, no, I, I don't believe in individual citizens of New Zealand, but across the board, on the whole, the critical mass of them makes it work out pretty yeah. well, and I think they'll be able to turn this around. Yeah. Now, look, I, I hate to make this about me, but the other thing that Zach Thomas, um, I think, uh, in a defamatory way suggested is that I have uh, supported violent protest, a- and I can see why someone of his naivety might do that, because it seems to me there is a new belief abroad, and certainly as a journalist, that reporting someone means you're supporting them. That if you interview someone, you agree with them. And I guess if you come from the cancel culture, anti-free speech thing, just talking to someone is support. And I've never seen it that way, Jonathan. I think talking to people who I might or might not agree with is actually part of my job. That's how civil discourse and discussion happens. Well, the, the, what's at the root of that view is that I am right. I, I don't need to have my views challenged or, or it's not possible that I could be wrong. And so because I'm right, if someone else is wrong, or wrong in my opinion at least, then the, I stand to gain nothing from engaging them. And while what comes from Zach there is a, is a slightly more sophisticated expression of that, uh, excuse me, a, a slightly more basic expression of that view, what we saw, uh, what we heard Mark Jennings and, and Professor Thompson discuss it actually was very similar. Um, would would, would uh, reporting on, on Peters actually actually not compromise us and, 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 and our, our sacred role in, the, in this whole system as well? Uh, I, I don't see how society avoids retreating into tribal structures if this is the way we're going to do it now. And, and Sean, that, that's why uh, I think uh, the, uh, the platform has had the success it had, or at least one of the reasons. Not because people come here to agree with you. There's a lot of opinions, a lot of your listeners, I think, quite dislike. Yeah. Uh, fair enough, that's, that's your right to express them and their right to dislike them. But they are engaging with opinions that they are not hearing in other places. 